been one of those weeks that's oftentimes very memorable uh, in all of our hearts and lives, and it's hard to make sense in the world as we know it today, and I hope for the next few moments we can bring some sanity to our hearts and lives and minds uh, as it pertains to current events. I'm in part three of a series that I've entitled One Way. If you have your Bible, and I hope that you do, if you'll turn with me to John chapter 14, verse number 6, Jesus says this. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Father, I pray over your word today. Lord, there are times and places where prayer just seems like something we're saying. But today I'm talking to you, a real, true, living God who is alive. That you haven't turned a blind eye to us or a deaf ear. That you're listening, you're watching, you're hearing, you're loving, you're caring, you're moving. And for the next few moments, Lord, would you move upon our hearts and minds? Would you show us truth? We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're getting started today, I always like to start with a little joke. And since it's getting closer to football season, and all the Texans will be happy about that. It reminds me of the story of this guy who went on this first date with this beautiful blonde. She had never been to a sporting event, much less a football game, and so he was interested in her reaction, and they had the best tickets money could buy, right on the 50-yard line, right behind the bench. Right before halftime, he looked at her and said, well, I'd like to get your take. What do you think about football? She said, well, I I really liked it, especially the cute guys with the big muscles, but I I can't understand why they're killing each other over 25 cents. Guy scratched his head. He said, what do you mean, 25 cents? She said, well, I I saw them flip a coin as we began. uh, And and after that, for the rest of the game, everybody's been inquiring, get that quarterback, get that quarterback. (laughs) Hello, it's only 25 cents. (laughs) We live in very uncertain days. What we don't lack for is information. We have plenty of information. Uh, It's readily available to us at any given time. You can be up to date about anything. Even here in church, you can pick up your phone, your iPad, and all of a sudden, uh, you can sit there today and watch the golf tournament while I'm speaking, if you'd like. It's the world we live in. Everyone has an idea, an opinion, and even an answer. But here's, here's the question we have to ask. What is the truth? I think that's a great question. I think we need to ask that question. Because Jesus said, I am the way. And this is what he says, the truth. So here's the thing about the truth, and we have to ask ourselves. Can it be found, and do I want to find it? Can I tell you something? I believe that most of the people that are here today want to know the truth. But I can tell you this. There are a lot of people who don't want to know the truth because it would destroy their idealism and philosophy. So let me start with this one point, and we're going to build from there because we're going to begin to make sense of everything and bring it into clarity today. We can become quickly deceived in the world. In fact, I'm going to say this today. I I believe the American people have been duped. Let let me say that again. I believe the American people have been duped. We've been duped to choose sides. Uh, We've been duped to come into this great conflict where we believe people that are our neighbors and friends oftentimes can become enemies. We've been duped into understanding there's this great divide of liberalism and conservatism. You understand, you doesn't exist, absolutely. But all of a sudden, we find ourselves at greater division than ever before. And you say, Pastor, what is the answer? And it's a simple one we're going to start with number one today. 
We choose to be deceived when we choose our way above Jesus. You understand, he is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way. There is no other truth. There is no other way to life. That means this, and listen to what I'm about to say today because it's important for all of us. That means that as a Christ follower, I follow him above all things. I follow him before my racial preferences. Somebody say amen. amen. I follow him before my job. I follow him before my patriotism. I follow him before my politi political affiliations and ideas. I follow him before my personal entertainment and pleasure. So here's something that I, I think that we need to come to an understanding about. As I was watching things this week, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I just got mad. Because, I, you know, we no longer have news. Somebody say amen. amen. We have somebody's idea of what we should see or think or what the news should be. Uh, and I'd really like to know who this person is who's making the distinguishment about what stories are important and what stories are unimportant. And so when we look at things, we say, well, certainly there's a reliable source. And as you sit here today, some of you are talking about your affiliate that you like to watch. And I have to be honest with you today. There are no reliable affiliates. Because what we need to understand is this is that we understand that there is one who is the Prince of Peace and he has a kingdom. And I hope if you're following him like I am, that you're going to be with me in his kingdom forever and ever and ever. Somebody say amen. amen. But this world is still bound by sin. And being bound by sin, it has a prince. And that is the prince of the power of this world, of this air. And he is the prince of darkness. And Jesus spoke about him. And he said he always hated the truth. Well, who is the truth? Jesus. Who said he was the truth? Jesus. In John 8, 44, it says he's always hated the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. And so I think that as Christians, oftentimes we have very unrealistic expectations to expect anything that coming truth through our television, through our iPad, or through our phone. Somebody say amen. amen. You say, well, pastor, what can we believe? Amen. Jesus said, my words will never, ever pass away. Here we are 2,000 years removed. And I'm telling you, it hasn't changed. The Word says He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. I hold to that. Amen. He hasn't changed. His Word hasn't changed. And can I tell you something? It is absolute truth. But here's the problem that we have. It is we have a society, especially those under the age of 35, that have changed their worldview because it's been shaped by education. It's been shaped to how they look at the world and how they perceive things and how they believe it to be. Me, myself, I, I, I'm a product of growing up in the 70s. Anybody here remember the 70s? That's when Dick Clark used to do a radio show every week called America's Top 40. How many of you remember that? Uh, and in that Top 40, th there, were, there was music from all races. Uh, I mean, in the Top 40, there were country songs, and, and there were R&B songs, and there were rock and roll songs. Not like today, is it? There is no Top 40 because... We have one affiliation of people that have their kind of music, and these people have their kind of music, and these people, and we have this great divide that's happened in our country. And we would love to be, believe here in this 21st century, because we are so enlightened and have so much information 
that we're better than we've ever been. Can I tell you, it's just not so. But today I want to talk to you about the truth. And in order to acknowledge the truth, oftentimes we have to come to this place where we realize that we've been duped. I, I, I've been deceived. Because when I, when I watch something, it seems like they want me to be mad. It seems like they're trying to incite me to be angry and upset about this great injustice that's happening. You say, well, pastor, you're, you're a white man in America. What kind of injustice could you encounter? Can I tell you, I've traveled the world. When my travels takes me to South Africa, oftentimes, and many of you will know of the years of apartheid that happened in South Africa and how horrible that was. But can I tell you something today? Today in South Africa, there's a reverse discrimination. And we might say this, well, it's righteous. Well, is exchanging one bad behavior for another bad behavior righteous? But you see, that's where we're trying to move to in this country. Have there been a lot of bad things that have happened in this country? Come on now. Everything from Native Americans? Come on now. Uh, to to Mexican-Americans, to African-Americans, to Jews, to Polish immigrants and Irish immigrants that came to this country and were also taken advantage of, and Italian immigrants. And there were great conflicts and divides. And yet we find ourselves at a place in this country where we're now the bad guys are the good guys. The very ones trying to protect us are the ones that have become the evil enemy. And I have to ask ourselves, how did we get to this place? And how we got to this place is that our perspective of truth is warped. And Jesus said this. He said, your eye. He's talking about your perspective, your worldview. Matthew 6, 22. He says, your eye is a lamp that provides light for your body. In other words, it affects, I always say this, what you believe will determine how you live. That's what Jesus is saying. Your worldview and how you see things is going to impact the way you live your life. He said, but when your eye is bad, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. In other words, you're so deceived and you don't even know it. So we've come to a place, and this is where we have to come to, because this is what I believe. We may not be able to change the world. Somebody say amen. amen. But we can change our lives and families. Amen. And we can change our church. And one of the things that we have to address in this place that, of how we've gotten so deceived is this. As Christians, we've taken our spiritual liberty to a place where we live without borders. How many of you know what I'm talking about? You know, it's just there all the time. It's there on my iPad. It's there on my computer. It's there on the television. Uh, it's just there, my entertainment world. It's just there. And it, there are no real borders, but we don't want condemnation. We just want to do what we want to do. But can I tell you something? Has it helped us any? And maybe, maybe we should be consider putting up a few fences. You say, Pastor, you just talked about vision. I'm talking about our own lives now. See, Paul says in Romans, as it deals with deception, look at this. In Romans 6, 17, he says, Now I make one more appeal, my dear brothers and sisters. Watch out for people who cause divisions and upset people's faith by teaching things contrary to what you have been taught. How many of you think there's a lot of things being taught that are contrary to the Word of God? Wait a minute. How many of you believe that there are things being shown and told and taught continually that are contrary to the Word of God? Let me see your hands. Look what Paul says. Stay away from them. 
Now, here, here's where it gets really iffy, because this is what we, where we find ourselves getting in trouble. Because we say, well, you're talking about something that's inclusive that causes division. That's not what I'm talking about at all. Can, can I tell you something? I love our church. How many of you love our church? Doug, how long have you come to church here? A long time. Probably 18 years, maybe? No, about 14. 14 years. Some of you see Doug up here. He's up here, and he helps me all the time, and he's been in my small groups. And um, the one thing about Doug, stand up, Doug, is that I want you to understand something. And, and this is going to be a shock to some of you. I, I don't even know that Doug is black. I mean, you would literally have to come to me and say, Pastor, you know Doug is black because he's my friend and I don't even know that he's black. I don't have to say my black friend Doug to impress you. Because he's not my black friend Doug, he's my friend Doug, or he could say my tall, ugly friend Alan. But Doug and I are our brothers. Amen. We share one thing in common, that we're following after Jesus together, and that is the primary focus point of our life. And so we are helping each other on this walk with one another. And in this walk with one another and following after Jesus, there are wolves along the way that try to come and deceive us to get us off the path that say, you know what, this is a good thing, and this is a good thing, and this is a good thing, and it's a good thing this, and this thing seems like a really good thing. Can I tell you something? If it's not the Word of God, it's not truth. So I'm sitting there, and, and I'm, I'm watching maybe your favorite news affiliate in mine, and I'm listening to this, all these opinions, because everybody has to be entitled to say what they think. And five police officers getting killed is just a platform for a lot of people to give their opinion. That's the sad part about it. Is the tragedy of what happened in the whole situation with one bad guy doing a lot of bad stuff. Now everybody feels like because everybody is a platform, everybody has to take sides. And I'm going to tell you something. It's a trick. And I'm going to encourage you not to get duped in. And what I mean by that is this. Listen to me and what I'm about to tell you today. Your opinion is not going to change the world. So you don't have to feel like it's necessary to share with all your friends on Facebook your opinion. Because where you may believe yourself to be an expert and prideful in an area, I, I believe there are a lot of things in unseen realms that we have no idea about because the Bible says there are principalities and powers that are behind all of these things happening. The Bible says, you wrestle not with flesh and blood, but principalities and powers in high wicked places that are pulling strings and making things happen that you can't see. And here we think that our fight is something that's in front of us. And listen to me, and we're supposed to be the spiritual people. And I just get mad because I see this great deception taking place in our country that we are further away from where we've ever been. And, and this is what we keep getting fed. We keep getting fed that one of these days in this world, everything is going to change. And let me tell you the truth. The truth is, it's not going to happen. 
But I will give you the truth about how it's going to happen, and it's in the Word of God, and you need to know about it. Because I believe it's going to happen in our lifetime. You see, we're being set up. Many years ago, I, I think it was five or six years ago, my spiritual dad, uh, Jim Mackey, was here. And some of you might have been here on that Sunday where he shared a message where he had a transcript from a secret meeting from the United Nations in Vienna. How many of you were here on that Sunday? A few of you. Uh, right after he had that transcript, the, you could, it was available online. But if you were to look for that transcript anywhere online today, you're not going to find it anywhere because... As far as anyone's concerned, that meeting never happened. And the United Nations put in place an agenda for what they, they are moving towards a one world government. To move everyone from the southern hemispheres into the northern hemispheres to eliminate all borders from all peoples and to do this through the auspices of global warming. You say, well, it sounds like another... <laughs> conspiracy theory. It wouldn't have been a conspiracy theory had Jim not had, had the transcript right here and we were all able to touch it and see it and read it and verify it, that this was the plan. But you say, well, why would they do that? Well, I want us to understand why they would do that and understand the place that we're coming to. Because you understand the world marketplace as we know it today is a very precarious place. That we all remember a, a big entity that happened here in town, a big company that all of a sudden went belly up and a lot of people lost a lot of money. How, how many of you remember Enron? But let's talk about Enron on a worldwide scale. You say, Pastor, you're acting like you're trying to cause people to be afraid. I'm not trying to cause you to be afraid, so just stay with me for a moment. You see, it's very precarious. All the things that we put our weight and money to, that we say, one of these days I'm going to retire and I'm going to have that. But what if on a scale we didn't have those things? What, what if the racial division became greater and the religious division became greater in the world and there was such unrest and such chaos that was happening and rioting was happening everywhere and the, the world economy was falling apart? What would happen then? He say, well, the world would need a leader to come and change those things. And 2 Thessalonians talks about that leader. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse number 15. The Apostle Paul talking to the church in Thessalonica because they're scared and convinced that the second coming of Christ has already happened. And the Apostle Paul is convincing them that it hasn't. And the reason it hasn't is because the Antichrist hasn't shown up on the scene. He says, don't remember, don't you remember that I told you about all this when I was with you? And you know what is holding him back, speaking of the Antichrist, for he can be revealed only when his time comes, for this lawlessness is already at work secretly, secretly, for this lawlessness is already at work secretly. It doesn't say it's happening out in the open. Somebody say amen. Amen. And it will remain secret until the one who is holding it back steps out of the way. Then the man of lawlessness will be revealed, but the Lord Jesus will kill him with the breath of his mouth and destroy him by the splendor of his coming. But before that happens, it says, this man will come and do the work of Satan with counterfeit power and signs and miracles. He will use every kind of evil deception to fool those on their way to destruction. Listen to this. Because they refuse to love and accept the truth that would save them. So God will cause them to be greatly deceived and they will believe these lies. Then they will be condemned for enjoying evil rather than believing the truth. <laughs> Revelation chapter 13 verse number 11 tells the story of both the Antichrist who has just been inflicted and the false prophet that comes on his behalf. It says, Then I saw another beast come up out of the earth, and he had two horns like those of a lamb. That's a note for us here. Because who is the lamb? Jesus. Wait a minute. Who is the lamb? Jesus. So he's coming in place of or like Jesus. But he spoke with the voice of a dragon. 
And he exercised all the authority of the first beast, and he required all the earth and its people to worship the first beast, whose fatal wound had been healed. He did astounding miracles, even making fire flash down to earth on the sky while everyone was watching. And with all the miracles he was allowed to perform on behalf of the first beast, listen, he deceived all the people who belong to this world. As we read the Word, we come to the writings of Peter in 1 Peter, and this is what he continually writes and says, we're not of this world. We're just people who are passing through. Come on now. And then John, when he writes his first epistle, this is what he says of us. Do not love the world or the things the world has to offer you. Because if you love the things of the world, the love of the Father is not in you. And it says here of the Antichrist, he's going to deceive many because they're of this world. And it gets me to thinking about my life. I don't know about yours. We sure got a lot of attachments to this world, don't we? Come on now. We sure got a lot of attachments to this world. Uh, we, we got things here and there, and we have security that's grounded in this world. I see Rebecca that's here this morning, and this week I had the honor of doing her dad's funeral. This may seem strange to some of you here today, but I enjoy doing funerals. You say, why do you enjoy doing funerals? You know why? Because I like talking about heaven. I like talking about a place that is perfect. Where there's no sin, and because there's no sin, there's no health issues. Somebody say amen. There's no rioting. <laughs> uh, there, there's no racial divisions in heaven because all that are there are of the Lamb and they want to be there. Can I tell you something today? There's no one that's going to be in heaven that gets there by surprise. <laughs> See, that, that's a lot of people's philosophy and theology. Well, I just hope that I get there. You know what? That's not a very good philosophy or theology. And can I tell you something? It's certainly not truth. You know, I was reading the words of Jesus today, and as I read his words, they were, oh, can I say this? They were conflicting inside of me. Words like, you know, it'd be better for you to enter to heaven without an arm than to have an arm that sends you to hell. Or without an eye. What? That we're to have a different idea and world perspective. And as I was talking about heaven, because Rebecca told me last week, she said, the one thing about my dad is I know that I know that I know that he loved Jesus and he's in heaven. Oh, wow. This is easy. Because I get to talk about heaven and what a wonderful place it's going to be and People, I have people sometimes say, well, heaven is going to be boring. (laughs) Can I tell you something? Heaven is not going to be boring. Let let me give you a picture of heaven, just a little picture so you can get it. You see, how, how many things, how many of you understand that there are things happening here today that we can't see? The Holy Spirit's at work. There are angels, there are demons, there are all kinds of things that are happening around us that we can't see. But when we get to heaven, they're going to show the real, and all of a sudden we're going to see how great God really is and was in our life. You called it luck. You're going to go to heaven and you're going to say, and this is what you're going to say, wow, God is awesome. 
And we all wonder, how can those 24 elders stand there in the presence of God all the time and be saying how great God is? How can they stand in his presence 24-7 all the time being saying that? Because they're getting a revelation of how great God is every moment. That he is at work all the time. He's protecting us when we don't know it. He's looking after us. He's drawing us to salvation. Uh, his love and his mercy is covering us and his grace. You know, we're going to look and we're going to be able to see all that. And we're going to say, God is great. Amen. You're not going to be able to stop. The headline of the day every day is going to be, God is great. And it's never going to get old. Because we're going to say, listen, it really wasn't me. <laughs> I thought it was me that made that choice and decision. It, God, that was you helping me all along. You put that person in my path. You caused that to happen. You didn't allow that to happen. That was you. And I'm here in this perfect place because of you. Oh, worthy is the Lamb. <laughs> worthy. That's why Paul wrote to the Corinthians these words, and I remember it in King James. <laughs> it says, No flesh will glory in his presence. You understand something your pride's not going to make it in heaven. Your insecurity that you, you, you show yourself in so many other ways and how you do it. Let me tell you, it ain't going to fly in heaven. Because it's all about him. And, and there aren't people that are going to be there by surprise. And so you say, well, I'm not certain if I want to go. Well, don't worry about it. <laughs> but can I tell you something? I want to go. And I'm not of this world. And I'm not buying into everything they're selling. And, and I'm tired of buying into everything they're selling. You know what? So I, I'm turning it off. You say, you're going to be out of the loop. <laughs> Same event, <laughs> different story. Come on now. You say, well, it's going to happen. They're going to, they're going to come and uh, they're going to confiscate this and they're going to take our guns away and they're going to do this and they're going to do that and, and they're going to come and take your tax status away from the church. Well, you know what? It's probably all going to happen. There you go. But can I tell you something? It's going to be okay. Come on now. Because I'm not of this world. So I'm going to quit investing in it. So you know what? You say, well, pastor, doesn't, doesn't it bother you? It bothers me to no end because I had my 18-year-old daughter at, at the table. She's 18, and she gets to vote this year. And she said, Dad, I don't really want to vote because I don't like any of the, either of the people. So we have to give our political speech. Well, maybe it's the lesser of two evils. <laughs> See, we, we can try to wrap it up in a package and make it look like a Christian. But Jesus said, you know a Christian by his fruit. Amen. Because a Christian says this, and you know this is a real Christ follower. It's all about him. Amen. See, this church, we really believe this. If you're new to this church, it's something you should understand. Pastor Shelley and I have been here 23 years. I don't have my name on anything in this church because it doesn't belong to me. My name's not on the sign. There's not a big picture hanging in the foyer. Myself and Pastor Shelley, thank God. Because it really is about Jesus. Amen. When the kids camp happens this week, the only person that's going to get credit is Jesus. Amen. Because he gave us the privilege of doing this. 
what an honor and privilege it is to serve the king. You see, the truth is, I'm not of this world. Because the word of God says those that are going to take that mark, we all know it, 666. It says they're going to take it because they're of this world and they want everything to change as it is. He's going to bring peace and prosperity. And the people of this world are going to buy in. There's no longer a conflict between Muslims and Christians. Can I ask you, who's causing the conflict? The devil is. Why is he doing that? Because when he sets himself up as the man of peace, he can take the conflict away. Come on, folks, let's get the picture. And we're in this day where the conflict gets greater and we say, well, this old world. Can I tell you something? The enemy's at work. But let me give you some good news. I'm not of this world. And so he has no business with me because I'm not of this world. He can come against me, but you know what? He's a prince and I serve a king. And he is a created being just like me. He's created. And I serve a God who is the creator. And we have a chance, maybe not to change the world, but we can change our family. This week we have an opportunity to change a community, one child at a time. They're going to come and they got everything labeled that you can imagine. Pastor Shelley has done them all. And we've had so many on their labels, ADHD, da 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 dee 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 You say, these kids got problems. They do. And we're going to bring them in and love every one of them. You say, why would you do that? Why would you take time and spend so much money in that? Because we're going to change what we can. Might as well focus on what you can do and not focus on what you can't do. You can't change Washington. You can't change Hollywood. So you might as well get busy on what you can change. With God's help, we can change ourselves and we can change our families and change the community around us. Don't you want to be a part of that kind of change? So let me ask you a question as I close today. And we really, we really got to delve a little deeper right now. Am I so vested in this world that I could be deceived? Am I so vested in security of this world and my identity and who I am and who I want to be that I no longer consider myself a follower of Jesus. I'm just a follower of the world that wants to go to heaven. And Jesus said to Thomas, you'll know the way. And Thomas said, Lord, we don't know the way. And he, he looked at Thomas and he said, Thomas, Thomas, I am the way. I am the truth and I have the life. No one, no one gets there without me. You see, not all roads lead to heaven. There's only one way today. And that comes through Jesus Christ. And so the question is, do you have a relationship with the Messiah? The one that can lead us home forever. And that, Do you have a relationship with him? Or are you so vested in this world that you can be easily swayed and fear overwhelms you? Because what if that happens? And what if I do lose everything? And, and, and what if this happens? And what if they come and do this? What, Pastor, what are we going to do then? We're going to do what we've always done. We're going to follow Jesus. Because he provides peace that passes understanding. Because greater is he that lives in me than he that's in the world. Will you bow your heads with me this morning? Are you a part of the world today? Are you overwhelmed by fear? Because you don't know where it's going or where you're going. 
You say, Pastor, I want to be excited about heaven like you are. I want to be anxious to know and see Jesus. And today it's just not so. But I want you to pray with me because I want that to change today. If that's you, will you raise your hand right now where you're at and I want to pray with you. Hands going up all over this sanctuary this morning. It's going to change for me today. I'm making a decision today. It's going to change for me today. It's going to change for me today. Father, I pray with these, with uplifted hand, we may, we're making a decision today to divest ourselves of this world. Lord, it, laid, it, it just lays more burden upon us. It lays more insecurity upon us. It lays more fear upon us. It lays more pressure upon us about what we're to be or what we're not to be or whose side we're supposed to be on. And Lord, I just give all that up today. And today I choose to follow you, Jesus. <laughs> I choose you to be my master, my Lord, my Savior, the one who makes the call for me in my life. Above anything, above my ideas, above my thoughts, <laughs> above my fears. And I'm asking you, Lord, to come into my life. Just like I asked you when I was eight years old and I was afraid to die. And I said, Jesus, forgive me my sins. And you washed me so clean. And you still do today. I thank you today, the Lord, in this place. It really is that simple. Now, we prayed for the forgiveness of sins today, and every head bowed, every eye closed, because we're going to close the service with another prayer today. That you're here today, and you brought things into this place that you don't want to carry out today. There are things in your life and things controlling you. It, it could be multimedia. It, it could be all kinds of habits and ideas. But there are things in your life. It could be drugs and alcohol. There are things in your life that are part of your life that you say, I don't want to carry that out of here with me today. I want to repent of those things, and I want to be free of those things today. If that's you, I want you to stand right where you're at. We're not going to ask you what those things are. Just stand where you're at. Say, there are things in my life that I don't want to carry out of this place today. I want to leave this place changed today. Young and old, like are already standing, maybe you need to be standing today to say, that's me as well. I don't want to carry these things with me. I want to be free of these things. Father, you see these men and women and young people, they're standing here in your presence. And you are a king. And you have great authority and power. <laughs> The word says that all things are under your authority. That's amazing. And so, Lord, we relinquish our authority to you, great King. And we ask, Lord, that we want, this is what we ask of you today, that we don't want to be the same, that we don't want, we don't want to carry these things out of this place. So, Lord, we lay them down at your feet and we ask for your help, that, Lord, we will never pick them up ever, 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 ever again. And the word says, he who the king sets free is free indeed. And we celebrate you today in your authority. Because in this world full of sin, you can free us from sin. We thank you for that today. In Jesus' name, amen. Will everybody stand with me today? The Bible commands us to love one another. I know it's difficult and hard, and we live, we live in a world where oftentimes it's the last thing we want to do. But can I tell you something? If we really want it to be different out there, can't we make it different in here? If we really want it to be different out there, can't we make it different here? 
So before you leave today, will you just find somebody and love them? Maybe somebody around you needs prayer, that you can pray with them and help them today. We love you. God loves you. He certainly wants the best for your life. We do need some men, if you're willing to, to be able to help get us all these chairs out. We're going to move them into uh, some uh, U-Haul uh, trucks right out here so we can get ready for the kids coming in here. So if you have some guys that are big and strong can help us with that, we certainly would appreciate it. We love you. God loves you. Have a great day today. You're dismissed. Stand amazed at the world.